Hey, I'm Matt Winning at winningstraith.com, and today we're going to attack a different subject that I usually wouldn't play around with, but I think it needs to be said, and I don't see a lot of people talking what I consider the right way, and that is on fasting. Is it good or is it bad? Well, let's go over some key factors, and I'll show you what I think. The first thing that we have to understand in any kind of diet process is that we have to keep the resting metabolic rate ramped up. Now what does that mean? That means if we go into too much of a caloric deficit, our bodies are going to start shutting down all kinds of different functions, namely creating or sustaining muscle mass. Now if we have this issue, what's going to end up happening is we're going to have to eat less calories in order to sustain weight, and that's not what we want. So let's do some mathematics here. If I have a hundred and 30 pounds of lean mass. And I want to lose a little bit of weight, right? But I don't want to lose all my muscle. Then I need to do 130 pounds times 15 calories. Okay? And that's going to give us 1,950 calories of food that I need to take in per day. So this is probably going to be pretty normal for a 160 pound woman or a very light, maybe 170 pound man that's sitting around 20-ish percent body fat, okay? Pretty common. We need 1,950 calories to sustain that weight of lean mass. Notice I'm not saying body weight, I'm saying lean mass. The reason is we don't care about feeding the fat tissue, we need to make sure we're feeding the muscle, right? So we need, this is muscle, bone, anything that's not fat, okay? So let's get that straight. It is a calorie type thing, but at the end of the day, we need to make sure how we're going to get these calories in. Now, if I need to be, if I am 130 pounds, I need 1,950 calories, then that means I need about 130 grams of protein. Now, if we take that 130 times four, we are going to have 520 cows need to come from protein. Okay, so if we look at that particular subject, then almost 35% or so of our diet is going to be needing to be in the protein source. Now, if we split 130 grams into five meals, we're going to need to eat 26 grams of protein per meal. Now, if I'm eating 26 grams of protein five times a day, I'm not going to be able to do that with potato chips or french fries, right? It's going to start really calculating what type of food I want. Notice I said five meals. The reason that I say five meals and I'm not a fan of fasting is because how, number one, am I going to get 130 grams of protein in if I can't split it up into five times 26 grams? 26 grams of protein is not a small amount for any person, let alone if this person only weighs 160, 170 pounds. So the point is, is that if I only do this in two meals or one meal, I'm going to have to eat 75 grams of protein in one meal. That's impossible, one, to absorb in my opinion, and two, it makes the meals ginormous. So in my opinion, in this particular fashion, fasting is bad. Now let's get into some other health parameters that we've seen become issues with fasting. Veterinarian research has shown pancreatic damage in rats, meaning that when they put the rats on fasting, they ended up having pancreatic damage causing insulin or diabetic issues. That to me shows that fasting may possibly not be a good option. The next thing that I think is huge so we've increased cortisol levels, so we're increasing more stress. So if we have a stressful job, we have stressful training, hopefully, we have all these other stressors, and now we're going to create a food problem with stressors, I don't think that's a good idea. So if you're increasing cortisol levels because of your diet, it could be a big, big problem, okay? The next big thing that I think is one of those snowball effects is that it reduces the amount of quality sleep, i.e. REM. Now what that does is that it secondarily triggers more hunger. So I find that I have seen people that have been on fasting type diets, they gain all of their weight back plus more. And the reason that I think you see that is because their sleep starts to get affected and then it increases hunger. And then when they do have bad meals, they gorge and they expand and get their stomach bigger. Now they can withstand more and more food at each sitting. Think about this, if I'm eating 26 to 30 grams of protein at only 160, 70 pounds per meal, Eventually, my stomach is going to shrink because I'm only I'm eating five smaller meals per day. So if I'm doing some type of a fasting and I get super hungry, I'm going to gorge on a ton of food, therefore increasing my stomach size, messing up my sleep, and increasing my hunger. It's just a big snowball effect. 
Now, the next thing is, depending on probably how long you do it and how deficient you actually are in your calories, your immune system is going to decrease. So what ends up happening with the immune system is that you're not getting the proper nutrients, you're not feeding it correctly, all of a sudden the immune system starts to shut down. Now this might be what I've seen in extreme studies, but at the end of the day, we don't want this immune system to shut down, especially in the pandemic that we're in right now, right? But the key is we want to eat quality foods and have those quality foods put in in a common and steady base, meaning you probably want to eat every three, four hours while you're awake. So in closing, what I want to talk to you guys about is no animal on the entire world in the animal kingdom fasts on purpose, okay? We, f we fast when there's no food. And if you're trying to be bigger and you're trying to be stronger and you're trying to be leaner and do all these things that the natural body doesn't want to do, what makes you think you're going to do that on less food? And the answer, in my opinion, is zero. So you don't find a lot of people use fasting unless they're trying to get that last little 1% off for a bodybuilding show where that leanness is gonna last for literally a week, right? We want sustainable goals. We want things that are long-term. If we lose weight, we wanna keep it off, right? And I think the reason you see fasting and diet pills and all these things is because it does show immediate results very, very fast. But the problem that I find with strength and with dieting and all this other stuff is that if it comes fast, it leaves fast. So remember that if, if you're using fasting, I'm not saying to stop it completely. I'm just saying start thinking about it in a metabolic property. You want to constantly give your body a little bit of food every two to three hours. You're going to have better digestion. You're going to have better control when you do have a meal. That's it. Let's just face it. I eat pretty clean, but if my buddies call me and want a pizza, you know, I may go out and eat pizza with them. But if I've already had four meals that day, then that fifth meal can't be nearly as big as if I've starved myself for seven or eight hours. So if you're locked up in a basement somewhere and you want to do the fasting thing, hey, I get it. You don't have access to any bad food. But we know that that's not generally most people's lifestyle. Most people's lifestyle is, oh, no, I can't eat. I'm fasting. Then they wait till 5 o'clock at night. They go out with their buddies after work and they smash some huge meal. And then they make up for it by not eating the next morning. In my opinion, it's not a great way to live. It's not a great way to be social. It's not a great way to keep muscle mass or strength or any type of performance. And it's not a great way to keep weight off long term.